Facebook Live. This is Paul and Heather. We're on a Paul and Heather Evolve to Win show. Hey. Good morning and welcome to your next week at work. Happy Monday to Happy you. Monday. Uh, okay, so we've got kind of a funny story that we're going to share today on this Facebook Live. And Paul, do you want to kick off the topic and then I want to share the story? The topic is being intentional about your, in your relationship. And so being intentional in your relationship. Um, so one of the things that we know for sure, and of course we've experienced this together because um, we're married, <laughs> is that marriage, if you're not really intentional about it, it can you can kind of get into this relationship rut. So we want to talk about just some fun things that um, you know we've learned over the years that can pull you out of that rut just in the off chance that you're in it. So, First question you're asking yourself is, hmm, am I in a relationship rut? So we've come up with a couple of questions to ask you so that you can just kind of like the self-assessment deal so that you can figure out whether you might have the relationship rut going on, right? Right. Okay, so uh, one example is going to be when you go out to eat, do you always go to the same restaurants? When you are with your wife alone or husband or whoever, um, are you having the same conversations and do you feel like you are just having the same conversation over and over? What is that where it was just like um, a groundhog, groundhog day, right? Where, where you're just, you've had the same conversations for the last 10 years, you've been there for 20 or five, but you could almost answer what, whatever they're saying, you can almost answer it for them because you've heard so many times. Or if you do answer it for them, if you <laughs> fill in the end of their sentence, then you know that that could be happening. Yeah. Um, do you end up watching the same TV shows? So like, are you in this habit and practice of watching the same things over and over again and having the same conversations about those same shows? Hey, and if you do, and, and if you do agree to, with this, and some of these are kind of resonating with you, hit the like button or hit the O button or the wow button or whatever button you want, just so we know that you are at least connecting with us on that. Okay. How about, okay, how about um, cooking the same meals? Now, this is one that Paul and I were terrible with yeah. for years and years and years. Um, we had perfected taco night, Spaghetti, spaghetti night. night. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything? I think that's all we really. <laughs> we did do mac and cheese for a long time, but then we got off. Yeah, yeah. We, don't, we can't even talk yeah. about that. But um, so, do you end up having the same meals over and over again? And it's just like you—you you sometimes feel like um, every day is sort of a repeat of you know the previous day or the previous week or month or year. So those are all sort of indicators whether you're in a rut. So I'll just recap. Hey, everybody who's joined us. Um, I'm going to recap a couple of them if you missed them. We're talking about whether or not you could potentially be in a relationship rut. A relationship rut is just when you kind of get stuck in doing the same things over and over and over again. So you go to the same restaurants, you watch the same TV shows, you have the same conversations to the point where you can fill each other's sentences in. Um, uh, how about same date nights? So this is where it gets kind of fun. Yeah. When you do a date night, I'm hoping that you're doing date nights, but when you do a date night, do you end up kind of doing the same date night over and over again? Um, or is the date night not even spontaneous? It's just kind of gotta, a gotta, routine. Gotta a yeah, so this is a, like a rut routine. Um, date night, you, whatever it is, you go to the same restaurant, you go and do the same thing every time. So. We're, we're pretty good at that. Yeah, doing we, it. we do. So I've actually had people on Facebook say, you guys go to more restaurants than anybody I know. And that may be true because I always check us in. So I remember where we went. So we know if we like it or didn't like yeah. it, we have a recollection. But we do have a habit for sure of dinner and a movie is like a very typical date night. But one of the ideas here is if this is all about being intentional in your relationships, right? We have gotten in the habit of on Friday night just being exhausted from a full week of work and staying home and watching a movie. I mean, it, they've made it so easy now that you just you really don't have to leave your home. I mean, you think about it, you can order pretty much any movie you want on demand anytime. You don't even have to go to Blockbuster anymore. They're not even around. But you, so everything's on demand and you can be in the comfort of your own home and you can have exactly the temperature you want to have in your blanket and you can pause it 
when somebody falls asleep or rewind it or whatever, right? So they've made it so convenient that it's kind of tough to pull yourself out of that, like, hey, let's go to a movie. Yeah. So Paul surprised me on Friday. We had friends in town, or sorry, family in town, and we were supposed to go out with them Friday night. And at the last minute, the plans kind of shifted. So Paul decided on his own to create a date night. And so what was kind of fun about this is he didn't even ask me about it. He just went online, ordered movie tickets, and um, and then sent me an email with kind of like an invite to our no, I was going to do the trifecta. I was going to do the happy hour, and and then we were going to go see the sunset, and then we were going to go see a movie. So I had those three things planned. Yeah, and it was a per that's like a perfect trifecta for me. Yeah. We missed the happy hour altogether because we just didn't pull it together fast enough, which was fine. Yeah. We had um, a tennis match the next day, so we didn't really need happy hour. But so we did make the sunset though. And and like every time you see a sunset, even if it's even if that's some kind of routine, which is not for us, that's actually unique and fun. Um, every time we're there, we ask each other, why aren't we doing this more often? So, you know, finding those unique events. So we had fun at the sunset. And because we now have that um, luxury of ordering tickets in advance, we had our seats already chosen. So we didn't have to hurry to get to the movie theater, and we knew that the previews play for a little while. Well, so I, don't know, and I, I don't know if you know if, if you're with me, but I do not like having to um, show up and buy the tickets and be there late and then have to find a seat when it's still kind of dark. Or You don't want to get there too early, and you don't want to get there too late. It's really nice to be able to just buy your tickets. <laughs> like, so then you can just it? time exactly. it exactly. Like, you know you're going to get 10 minutes of previews, so you just you, you plan that. So, okay, so we've got our seats. We're not too worried about getting there on time. And then Paul misses the turn in. We're like two blocks from the movie theater. We go to Paragon in Naples. So we're at the beach, two blocks from the movie theater, miss the turn, have to take a whole bunch of extra turns. So we're like five minutes later than we thought we'd be. We get to the parking lot and there's, there's no parking because they had a couple of sections that were roped off probably from the hurricane still. So couldn't find parking. So we're now another five minutes late. And of course, have to get popcorn, and so we do that another five minutes late. So by the time we get into the movie, which was, by the way, Blade Runner, and you can go ahead and share your thoughts on that. If like, you're a big Blade Runner fan, you'll enjoy. Ooh, well. Oh, we've got some likes. Okay, <laughs> I'm like a total. <laughs> That's another story, but yeah, you, you kind of got to know what's going on for Blade Runner, and so now we're like 15 minutes late getting into the movie theater. I've got an ice water, Paul's got an ice water, and a, a large bag of popcorn, because the guy totally upsold us. We go into the movie theater. Now at Paragon, if you know this movie theater, they have the total recliner chairs. So we have to like work our way you know, through the, in front of the couples and the recliners. We get in there, and of course the movie is already probably 10 minutes in, and it was really, really dark. So any of you who've seen Blade Runner, you know that there's nothing light in that movie. Everything's always dark. So. We get in, I sit down. The first thing I do is I take my I take my water and I put it down so I can like get the popcorn so Paul can get situated. So I take my water, I put it down in the drink holder right next to me, and I proceed to put it right, <laughs> right into the beer of the guy who's sitting next to me. And I proceed to spill his beer all over him and all over me. So it was like, you know, it's not like I was gentle in putting my cup in. I literally put my cup down, and it was like this little explosion of beer on him and on me. And then I'm I'm st still standing up, so I'm standing up here, and I have the all bag of popcorn. Six foot four but, of you know, everybody's all sitting down, and you know, they don't want this big, trying to watch huge guy standing in front of them. So I'm trying to sit down as quickly as possible. So I give Heather the bag of popcorn at the same time that she's dealing with that. At the same time I'm spilling everyone's beer. Yeah. So I go and I'm going to grab the napkins to wipe the guy off. And so Paul and I collide and the popcorn goes flying. So now this guy is wearing his beer and our popcorn. And it literally was like a mountain of popcorn. So he's ankle deep in popcorn. He's drenched in beer. And, I, and I'm like, I'm like at this point, God, I don't even really know what to say to this man. I grab the napkins and I start like blotting, <laughs> blotting them off. And so he he's like taking the napkins from me and kind of like very kind. He didn't yell at me. He didn't swear at me. He's clearly annoyed, right? Because yeah. we come in like a house on fire. <laughs> and so the, okay, so what happens is after I pull myself together, I look at him and I say, "Sir." what kind of beer are you drinking? And he said, uh, he goes, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. And he said, no, please tell me what kind of beer you're drinking. I'm going to go get you a beer. He's like, no, trust me. It's fine. So 
I sit there for a couple more seconds and I'm like, ah, this just isn't right. So I get up with my empty bag of popcorn and I walk up front and I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just gonna talk to them, see if the see if they'll, you know, let's let's get the new popcorn, let's get the beer, whatever. And I then I had an awesome experience, right? The the general manager intercepted me and he's like, Hey, can I refill your popcorn? And I said, Let me tell you what happened. We got here late. Um, I spilled the guy's beer next to me. I dumped my popcorn all over. I'm like, so far, not a great start. And the guy totally hooked us up. He goes, what did he look like? I can tell you what he was drinking. I mean, it was just amazing. So they didn't even let me pay for the popcorn or the beer. I go back in, hand the guy his beer, and within moments, both of them are sleeping. <laughs> well, but, but, but prior to that, and I just want to say this quickly because this is all about being intentional in your relationship. So I really wanted this. This My expectations of the night out, the date night out was that we're going to have fun. This is the trifecta, right? We're going to go to happy hour, have some good food, and then we're going to go see the sunset. And we're going to, and I had this envisioned, you know, what it was going to be like. And when that popcorn spilled and the beer spilled, I literally was sitting there and I was like, I just, should we just go home? I, I, I was really debating to myself, I just want to get up and I just want to walk out and I just want to go home and just call this a night and start all over tomorrow. And But we stuck it out. We stuck it out. And you know what's really interesting is, okay, so it wasn't the perfect date night. Honestly, okay, so let me just give you, don't worry, there's no spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Blade Runner yet, we're not going to spoil it for you because to this day we have no idea <laughs> what was going on in that movie. We don't know the plot. We don't understand what was happening. I still don't know what a Blade Runner is. And but, all I know is that nobody smiled once in the movie, and there was never sunshine. It was always dark the entire time. It was dark and rainy, but uh, that's beside the point. Um, we never we never watch previews before going to movies because usually in a preview you see the whole thing. So we always like to be surprised. But trust me, if you go in ten minutes late on that movie, yeah. you, you might as well just yeah. turn it around. So anyway, um, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? It wasn't the perfect movie for us. It wasn't the perfect scenario. But I got to tell you you being intentional about scheduling that date night out, we have memories that we'll laugh about for a long time to come. And it's just, it's that whole idea of if you're in this routine in your relationship and you're constantly doing the same thing over and over, um, that rut can feel pretty depressing. Well, and, and I think one of the, you know, one of the other really big ruts that you can get into is in a relationship is just talking about the same stuff and having the same conversations. And I mean, it is, I think that's <laughs> one I've of the biggest struggles. Have that story about? Yeah. And you're like, just only the same old times. story over and over and over, and you're just so tired of hearing it. And so how do you bring new like topics into your relationship? How do you, how do you talk about new things? Because it can't always be about the kids. It's, it can't always be about the same stuff that you did you know, in high job. school or in job or that person, you know, whatever it is, it's really being intentional about the information that you are watching, listening to together. So one of the things that Heather and I have done in the past, and we still do it now, is, and I've talked about Think and Grow Rich, the book before, but we've, we've read that book together. So we've read a lot of books together and creates and it st stimulates this new conversation about different things and insights about other things. So it really starts to, for me, it really makes it much more exciting and much more fun to be able to have those conversations. It's the same thing with watching stuff. And we've been doing a lot of that lately, which is opened up all new conversations about, you know, how and what we want to do, not only personally, but in our business as well. And so it's, I think it's really, really important to be talking about new things and new topics. And you have to be intentional about those. You have to find those, you have to search for them and you have to bring them in and and both make a decision to do that. Yeah, and I think the, um, so that practice has been really, really good for us. And part of the reason is like, I don't wanna rely on just me coming up with something new to talk about. And I certainly don't wanna rely on you to just come up with something new to talk about. Yeah. So give it up to someone else, right? So every every morning we take time and we will read, watch, or listen to something either educational or business or spiritual, but it's not just the reading, watching, or listening, it's the conversation that we have after, where I say, Paul, what did you get from that? What are you gonna, you know, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna do anything different? 
And it's those conversations that really we're kind of using that mastermind principle, which is amazing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think sometimes we make it harder than it needs to be. And we need to call in outside resources here and there to, you know, give us that that new and different. And well, I think it's that's just so it's so easy to stay into stay in the habitual way of being when you are in a habit. And sometimes habits are great. Right. I mean, good habits. And sometimes and they're great in relationships as well. But sometimes we can get in bad habits with our relationships where it just becomes too much routine. It becomes too much of that rut. And you really, that's when you absolutely have to be intentional about it. Yeah. And, you know, one other thing I was thinking about too is just like in restaurants, you know, a lot of times like Heather doesn't like spicy foods. So I don't get to go eat, rest, eat at restaurants that generally have spicy food. There's spicy food at the sushi place. And everywhere, to go to. right? And so, but. You know, it's giving up a little bit too. It's it's you know going to that restaurant that you maybe not like, but just doing it because you want to just have that other person enjoy that. Yeah. So just like making we went to some the hockey attention. game this weekend. Yeah, went to hockey. Yeah. That, which is you know for a team that we don't watch. Right. And that and it turned out being really cool. We had HBK invited us to go to their suite, and yeah. so we saw that's something that we would never typically do, but. You know, it was kind of a win-win. We got to see our friends and hang out with friends and clients. And Yeah, but we, and then, we were like in a suite, so it wasn't like it we were slumming it at all. It, it was suck. great. Um, but uh, I, want to hear, I want to hear first, I just want to throw it out there. I would love to hear where, where do you find relationship rut in your world? So what are the things that you tend to do over and over again? And even more importantly, what are the things that you do to get out of it? So do you have any unique kind of like fun date nights that you do that totally mix it up? Um, do you have certain uh, vacations that you like to take? What is it that you do to really be intentional about your relationship? So we're kind of like, we're here saying we want to hear more about what other people are doing. Um, we've got some good practices that we wanted to share with you, but we want to hear what else do you do to keep it alive and make it fun? Because quite frankly, and this is what my grandmother told me on literally on her deathbed when I when I she was in hospice and I said, Grammy, what advice do you have for me? And I and I'm seriously like waiting for this totally transformational, like which because she was one of the most wise people ever in my world. Oh, and you know, all women that are currently listening to this or watching the rebroadcast, please stop whatever you're doing and listen to this because this is the most important. <laughs> information you will ever hear in your entire, the greatest tip you will ever, you ever get in your okay. lifetime. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So Grammy, what is, what is the one thing that I need to know? What did, what have you learned about life that I need to know? And she says to me this, Heather, take care of your husband. He's Drop like, the mic. <laughs> <laughs> take care of your husband. He's the most important person in your world. Full stop. And do you know what's really interesting? Instead of just being fully open for that advice, like these are my grandmother's, like some of her last words to me and saying thank you and really soaking it in, I was kind of like, okay, I got that, but give me the real advice, you know? Like, no, that was it. That was it. And so, but over the years, she died in 2010, and over the years I've thought about it, and one of the things that my grandmother was for me was an incredible role model, right? She wasn't so much about telling me what to do, but she modeled behavior. And the way that she modeled her marriage, now she, this is really interesting, she was married to my grandfather, uh, God, I don't even know what year they got married, but he passed away in 1972, and I was two years old at the time. No rabbit hole, let's go. I know, but come on. Let's so go. so he was like her, her one and only. She then got remarried at the age of 80, something 82 something like this and she was so in love with her second husband ralph those two were together all the time holding hands all the time like literally like two young teenagers so she modeled exactly what she shared with me which is take care of your husband He's be intentional in your about your relationship be intentional about your relationship so please share with us it's not easy all what the time. do you do how do you keep it fun where are you intentional in your relationship? Because we'd like to learn from you too. We are signing out for now. This Facebook Live is over. I hope so this helps. Have a great day. Have a great day.